Hello and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So in today's video, I want to share with you about how you can use a traveler's notebook as part of your creative practice. So there are several components to a traveler's notebook. One of them is the signatures or notebooks that go within the book, and the other one is the cover. This cover is actually made out of cloth and interfacing, but the original covers for a lot of the traveler's notebooks were just basically a piece of leather that a few holes punched into it. This version of a traveler's notebook is basically done with cloth and interfacing, and it's been sewn to give it strength. And in this case, uh, there's been grommets punched into them, to provide strength along these enclosures and there are two sets of elastic through here. So this will hold up to four, four or eight notebooks depending on how you string them into your book. And this one also comes with an elastic enclosure. Not all traveler's journals or traveler's notebooks come with this particular enclo uh, elastic enclosure. But I also like adding charms to mine, which is part of the reason I also like using an elastic enclosure. One of the, my favorite components of the Traveler's Notebook are the little notebooks that, that come with the journal cover. And again, a lot of these are interchangeable depending on what kind of journal you have and what you would like to do with it. Just to give you a little background on these notebooks, or signatures as I will call them, what a signature is, is basically a bunch of paper that's been folded and often either stapled in a lot of cases for traveler's notebooks, or in my case, I actually took it all and pierced holes and actually hand stitched each of these individual books. And why I call them signatures is this is a way that most notebooks were are created. For example, with each of these, these are each a sheaf of paper. And if you were actually going to do a bound book, you would put these together, sew them, glue them, and actually turn them into a book. An example of this is actually this book here. You'll notice it's actually made of two signatures. By each of those groupings of papers have basically been glued and stitched so that they can be bound as part of the book. So the thing with the Traveler's Notebook is basically instead of having all those signatures bound into a book, now you have the ability to be able to take them out, work on them, put them back in, or even switch them out to depending on what you want to work on on that particular time. I know you can get ones with different colors of paper. I, For example, this other Traveler's notebook that I have, I actually did colored paper that's a little bit stiffer on the outside of each of the signatures, just so that I could tell them apart and they were all are being treated like individual books. Or you can do it like this where you don't actually have the little covers and it, it's supposed to be more of one full book that you use either side of, of each piece of paper. What's nice about this is depending on the type of traveler's notebook you have and the size is there's a lot of options out there about what you can use in your traveler's notebook. I know there's calendars, you can get rule paper, you can get just plain paper like this. There's a lot of varieties in the materials that you can use in a traveler's notebook. In my case, part of the reason I make my own traveler's notebooks is I am very picky about paper. I've realized that over the last little while. I like certain papers in my journals, certain papers in my notebooks, and I don't like using a piece of paper that I'm not really happy with. I use a 32 pound super smooth paper, and what makes this so great is it's really great for writing with my fountain pens. Uh, it's great for actually drawing and sketching on. And so for me, it's a much smoother, high quality paper that doesn't wreck my pens and I actually get really great results with. So to add these into your book, you basically just stretch them past the elastics and put them in. And this is what makes it nice because you can put them in, you can remove them. This one's a little tight because it's brand new. I haven't actually used this book yet. It's it's one of my, my new ones that I, I'm looking forward to using sometime soon. But as you can see, it's very easy to get these notebooks in. And there you go. So basically, that's how you can keep it bound up. But there's still lots of room in there for it to expand and grow as you continue to work in it. And that's the beauty of the Traveler's Notebook. You can add in pictures. You can add in a lot of different things. And by having the elastic here, it doesn't matter if your book gets a little thick, the elastic kind of keeps everything contained and holds it in, in place. So when you are purchasing a Traveler's Notebook, it's important to realize that they come in a variety of sizes. These four sizes you see here are just some of the sizes that I've created as I figured out what really works for me. Uh, there are so many different sizes out on the market that you need to be aware that when you buy a cover, 
make sure that you can find signatures or you can create signatures that will fit into your book. So now we're going to talk about how we can use the Traveler's Notebook in our creative practice. So this is the very first Traveler's Notebook that I created. And in this case, what I chose to do was do a mix of just white paper with the pattern paper covers, as well as I actually did one in here that has pattern paper in it as well. And so it's one of those things of you don't necessarily have to stick to one particular type of paper or one particular type of design in your traveler's notebooks. This one I use specifically for writing notes down from, from books, quotes, things that inspire me. And this is a great place where I can have each notebook have a particular theme. For one of them, it's my creative journaling classes. For another one of them, it's the great books that I'm reading and some of the quotes that I don't want to forget. Uh, there's This has been a really great place for me to be able to have the equivalent of four notebooks in just one book. And so for journaling, for just writing notes and, and keeping track of things, this is a really great way of keeping yourself organized. I know some people also use them to do bullet journaling. That's also an option. There's no end to how you can be using this is to write and take notes for the things that you enjoy. So this particular journal size I've been using a lot recently. It's seven and a quarter inches by five inches. And basically in this journal, it's quite thick already actually, and I still have lots to add. Uh, but one thing I would say is I love using these notebooks as a small scrapbook, a place to put some thoughts, some of the tickets and different things that I get when I go to events and be able to just share some of my thoughts. It's also great paper for actually doing calligraphy or doing any sort of uh, writing because I chose a particularly smooth paper for that reason so that it will take stamps well that I can add my fountain pens to this I can actually use quite heavy fluid ink and it doesn't seep through the paper but it's super smooth to write on so it doesn't pull the fibers into the nib either and so with this one I've actually purposely chosen this size because it's really great for using five by seven pictures or a lot of variety of picture sizes because you can still get a really good layout with these pictures and still have room for your journaling. And so yeah, I just basically have been spending some time writing about the pandemic from the last year. I've also been using paint in this particular journal. What's nice about this paper is it is actually strong enough to withhold the paint in it, which is another great reason that instead of just being something that's just a notebook, you can take it a little bit further and be able to add different mediums to it. And again, I'm using mostly paper on this one, paper and photos, some stamps. But I thought it was a really great way of being able to have a really small space to be able to share about something I'm going through. I enjoy scrapbooking, but sometimes it can feel like a bit of a commitment where I find my traveler's notebook. I can write down some thoughts, talk about my, my tasty breakfast during the pandemic because all the restaurants were closed to be able to just really enjoy talking about those small moments in life. Another way that I like using these traveler's notebooks is by adding in my jelly prints and using it as a space for creative journaling and more of an art journaling form. If you want to know how to do these particular jelly prints, I have actually a couple weeks ago did a video on pan pastels and jelly printing and these are all prints from that jelly printing session. So basically what I do is I just cut them, I glue them into my journal with a glue stick and then basically just add in my journaling, add in a few extra stencils and stamps and this way I'm able to really kind of work through some of the things that I'm feeling and be able to do some creative journaling but again it isn't very time consuming and again I've basically done the entire notebook with all of these jelly prints that I created a couple weeks ago and because of this this gives me a good starting point for being able just to add to these pages and being able to add more creative journaling to my notebook. And why I generally like using both these sizes and this larger size, I think I'm going to do another one actually in, in about this size that's also going to have pictures and scrapbooking and everything else in is because you can use these 4x6 pictures. 
It also fits my Polaroids really well. I actually have a Spectra Polaroid camera, which is a larger Polaroid format that will also work in here. But it's also nice because you can have these little Instax ones that also fit really well into these books. So again, the, you don't have to only use one format, but this I like the larger sizes because it gives me a little bit more versatility. The other option is to stick with a much smaller journal. What's nice about a small journal is that it may be a little less intimidating, or if you only want to be able to share a few things on a page, this format might work a little bit better for you, where you can basically write just a few thoughts, a few comments, and that can be good enough. The other option is you go for something really small. This I actually created as a gratitude journal, which I haven't used yet, but the intention was to be able to basically write one thing on each page, keep it really simple. But what you'll notice is these ones that actually use the staples over the sewing. I prefer the sewing, but the staples also work quite well. So if you're interested in buying a traveler's notebook, I do have a few for sale at my Etsy store. I have them really in these three finishes, the white, uh, the oranges, and the blue florals. And basically, this is kind of my first run of these books that I have decided to uh, make for sale. And again, all of them generally come with the stitched signatures. In them, most of them come with just the white paper. A lot of them, each individual one will tell you which kind of cover you have for each of the signatures. And I also have several sizes in each. So one thing you will notice about the books that I sell is all of them come with four signatures. That gives you 160 pages because there's 40 pages for each signature to let you have a lot of paper to be able to do some creative things with. I know a lot of people sell them separately. You buy the cover and then you buy all the signatures. But I, I really feel that at least at this point, I wanted to share something that you would be able to have the paper right away to be able to work on. And again, I do some different custom sizes than some other shops do. So that was part of the reason I also decided to add the paper into each of the Traveler's Notebook covers. I would love for you to check out my Etsy store. And again, if you like the concept of these books but with like a different color or a different pattern or even a different charm on your book just please let me know reach out to me I would love to start a conversation with you I hope this has given you some ideas about what a traveler's notebook is how you can use it in your art in your creative practice or just even in your journaling uh, if you have enjoyed this video if you could like it subscribe to my channel maybe provide a comment below about what you liked about this video also on my website hopalongstudio.com where I have other ideas and how you can have a creative practice in your own life. I hope you have a really great week and I will see you next time.